Hello guys, in today's video, we are going to talk about Islamic sources of finance. So before I move on to the instrument which I use in Islamic financing, first of all, let us discuss the difference between Islamic financing and conventional uh, banking. Now, basically, Islamic financing was developed as an alternative to conventional banking. Now, what normally people think is that in conventional banking, bank is earning the interest a return. While in Islamic financing, they think that bank will not earn any return. But this is not the case. So even in Islamic financing, bank will earn a return. But there is a difference in way of doing work. In conventional bank, the bank want to earn interest on cash. While in Islamic sources, the bank wants to earn return on asset. So that is the basic difference between both the banking. Now, they have basically, in Islamic sources, they have basically developed some instrument that will fulfill the need of uh, the people. So obviously, if you want people to go from, uh, if you want them to shift from conventional banking to Islamic ban uh, banking, you need to fulfill the needs. Now, normally, whenever we uh, go to the bank, normally we go to the bank for house loan, for business loan, for asset loan, uh, maybe some overdraft, etc. So if Islamic bank does not provide an alternative to these, so people will continue to go towards conventional banking. Okay, which, uh, which basically earns a return on cash, which is actually prohibited in Islamic financing. Interest is prohibited in Islamic financing. So that's why Islamic banking uh, developed seven instruments. So one by one, I will be discussing each of these instruments. Now, first of all, we are discussing Murabha contract. Now, basically, it was developed for the purchase of raw material. Now, let's say Mr. A, he wants to buy a raw material of $10,000, but he is not having the money. So now he may visit a conventional bank. Now, conventional bank, they will give you the loan. Okay, so conventional bank, they will give you the loan. Now, obviously, on that loan, they will be charging some interest. So let's say they are charging how much interest? They are charging 20% interest. So this is conventional banking. So over here, interest is involved, which is wrong. Now, in Islamic uh, banking, the bank obviously need to find a solution to this. Okay, so in Islamic banking, let's say, Again, let us take the same scenario. We need a material of $10,000. So what I can do is I can go and I can visit Islamic bank. And what you will do is you will avail a Murabha facility. So in Murabha facility, if you tell the bank that I want to buy a raw material of $10,000, so bank will not give you the cash of $10,000. They will not give you a loan of $10,000. They will ask you, that from which supplier do you purchase the uh, raw material from? Like, is, is, is there any preferred supplier? Then the bank will send its team to that supplier. They will send an agent to that supplier. And they will purchase the raw material for you. Okay, now obviously that raw material belongs to the bank. The bank is the owner. Okay, the bank is the principal. They have the raw material. Okay, they are the owner. So now what they, can, what they can do is they can sell that material to you at any price. Okay, so they will offer to sell you that material at a profit. So let's say they will give you that material for $12,000. Although the cost is actual cost is 10,000, but they will give you that material for how much? $12,000. And now you have to make the payment against the purchase of this raw material to the bank. Now, Basically, over here, you can make the payment in installments. Like, let's say, maybe for example, you might pay $1,000 each month. Okay, so over here, no interest is involved. I'm simply purchasing that raw material for the bank and bank is charging a profit against that. And I will be making the payment in installments. So in both conventional and Islamic bank, the bank will take the return. In conventional banking, bank will take the return on cash, 
but in islamic bank the bank will take the return on asset like it is happening over here they are taking the return on asset now over here basically in uh, mura in case of muraba uh, like i told you that you have to make the payment in installment now let's say if there are any late payment so a court in theory the theory says that principal the bank cannot charge any penalty on late payments uh, but practically they do charge the penalty on late payments and uh, similarly in theory it says that there will be no discount given on early payments either so that was all about muraba now let us discuss about ejara contract now if you need money for asset so you will go for ejara contract so ejara is for assets like car machine etc uh, now policy is exactly the same which i have discussed in muraba contract now let's say you need to purchase a car of 5 lakh dollars so what i can do is i can visit a conventional bank now bank will offer you an auto uh, loan now let's say they will be charging 10% interest okay so again over here they will take return on cash so now what i can do is instead of visiting a, con a conventional bank i can go and i can visit islamic bank and i can avail ejara contract so in ejara contract bank will ask you that which car or do you want to purchase uh, whether you want to purchase a new car or a used car so if if let's say if you want to purchase a new car they will purchase that car directly from the company and if you want to purchase a used car so they will be purchasing that used car from the showroom on your behalf so now bank is the owner of that car they they, they have the ownership of that car they have purchased a car for you for let's say 5 lakh dollars so now what a uh, bank is the owner so they can sell that car to you at a profit now let's say they will be selling that car to you for 7 lakhs 7 lakh dollar okay so now what you have to do is you have to make the payment in installment so again islamic bank they have earned a return on asset so the difference is only in the way of doing work now basically this uh, ejara contract this is actually like an operating lease where the bank is responsible for the major maintenance of the asset okay so if the asset is damaged or destroyed the bank will be responsible for it but the lessee which is you you will be responsible for maintaining the asset in a good shape so initially it is just like an operating lease but its redemption uh, feature that is structured in a way that makes it similar to a finance lease the question is what do i mean that uh, by that redemption feature makes it look like a finance lease basically as soon as you would pay the last installment you will get ownership of the asset so that this redemption feature this makes it more like a finance lease so as soon as i will make the last installment uh, I, i will pay the last installment i will get ownership of the asset mudarba contract now let's say you need a business loan so you can visit a bank and you can show your business proposal to the bank now in mudarba contract uh, basically one party will invest the cash and the second party will invest time and skills okay now we have the business idea but i don't have the cash with me so i will be investing my time and skill now bank is having the money so bank will invest cash so this is basically just like a uh, this is a kind of specialized partnership okay where one partner uh, is contributing the capital and that partner is basically known as rabbul mal and the other partner will be contributing skills the expertise the time and he is basically known as mudarib now basically over here there will be um, if let's say if there is any profit over here so that profit will be distributed according to the uh, agreed ratio whatever the agreed ratio is in that according to that ratio your uh, the profit will be distributed but let's say if there are any losses so losses will be distributed as per the investment okay it will be distributed as per the investment 
now bank has invested the cash right so they will face loss of money and you have invested time and skill so you will face loss of time and skill now obviously bank will face more loss right so normally banks they don't provide mudarba contract because in case if there is a loss all the loss belongs to the bank right because they are the one who are investing the money obviously i will also be at a loss i will i, um, I have invested my time and my skills but obviously bank is suffering more loss so that's why these uh, banks they don't uh, usually offer uh, mudarba contract so this is not a successful model next is musharaka contract so musharaka contract that is a pure partnership contract so over here uh, if you need loan then both the parties will invest cash and time okay so this is just like a partnership so every partner will have to contribute a capital have to contribute cash so uh, basically every partner will be entitled to participate in management of the company but they are not required to do so okay so over here uh, let's say if there is any uh, profit so that will be shared according to the agreed ratio and if there are any losses so that will be uh, distributed as per the percentage invested so let's say if you have uh, if the investment is 50 50 so loss will be distributed half half so this is a favored instrument for bank because over here both bank and uh, the other party will invest money so risk level for the bank will be low so they usually favor uh, musharaka contract next one is sukuk now uh, sukuk is basically islamic bond Uh, now many people they are interested in making investment in bond uh, let's say you will give 1000 dollar to a company or bank and they will give you a certificate and uh, then after that you will start earning a return so since over here interest is involved uh, because these are pure bonds so interest will be involved so that's why in interest is wrong in islamic financing so uh, islamic bank does not allow the interest so because of this they have introduced an instrument known as sukuk which is basically a islamic bond okay so it will generate income and that income will be generated from the assets uh, now have you ever wondered how basically uh, they will pay return on bonds now basically you know what happen is that many people they will make investment in bond so bank will be having a lot of cash they will be having cash in millions of dollars so bank will invest those millions of dollar in some other places okay and now and obviously if they invest in uh, those millions of dollar in the other places they will be generating some return right let's say they have generated a return of 15% so from that 15% they will just give you 10% and they will keep the rest of the return with themselves so this is how usually the banks operate so now whatever income you will earn uh, on uh, conventional bonds so that is wrong because interest is involved but over here in islamic bond in sukuk you have given your money to the islamic bank and they will give you a return now that return is generated from asset not on cash that is return is not given on cash that is given from the asset on asset now over here basically uh, we have two type of sukuk one is asset based sukuk and the other one is asset backed sukuk now if i talk about uh, asset uh, based sukuk so over here the sukuk holder they will give cash to the bank and from that cash bank will buy an asset okay now bank will uh, give that asset back uh, back to its owner okay or uh, it will lease that is sales and lease back so they have purchased that asset and then they will uh, sell it uh, sell that asset and take it on lease 
So if I purchase the asset from owner and then give that asset on lease to the owner, so owner will give you uh, lease rentals. Okay, they will give you rentals, right? So bank is generating a rental income from your money. So this rental income, this will be distributed to the Sukuk holder. So still you will receive, uh, still you will receive an income of let's say nine percent or ten percent, but that interest, uh, but over here interest is not involved. You will be receiving a return on asset, because in day one they have basically purchased an asset, uh, then after that uh, they sold that asset and purchased it on lease. Okay. Now the other one is asset back Sukuk. So again over here you will give money. Okay, uh, to the bank and they will issue a certificate to you. Now from this cash bank will purchase an asset which is already generating an income. Like let's say from that cash they will purchase an investment property which is generating a rental income. And now that rental income will be distributed to the super holder to you, okay, to the bond holders. Uh, Salam contracts. Uh, now over here you will enter into a contract with the seller and seller they will agree to deliver goods to you in future uh, but at a committed date. Okay so you will order the goods today and he will deliver do, uh, those goods at a future date. Now over here you have to fulfill some condition then only it will be correct. Because right now, at the time of advance, no asset is present. So you have to fulfill some conditions. Number one, you have to deliver the goods at exact date. No delay is allowed. Then number two, you have to deliver the goods of exact quality, which was initially agreed. So if you fulfill both of these conditions, then only it will be correct under the Islamic financing. Otherwise, it is incorrect. Now the last one is, uh, is, to, is this a contract. So uh, it means to order something. So if you're selling food, so obviously uh, if you, if, let's say you're selling some goods which does not exist now. Like let's take an example of food business or real estate business that is based on this concept. So let's say if I give money to buy a burger so right now it is not ready it will take around 15 to 20 minutes to get ready if you order something so if you order something and it will take time to make that asset so that is allowed under islamic financing but again over here the goods must be delivered at the exact date no way and no variation in quality is allowed so salam and istina contract is almost the same the only difference is that in Salam contract, you have to make the payment. You have to make all the payment in advance. While in Istina contract, you can make the payment slowly and gradually. So I hope you guys like this video. So do give a thumbs up if you like the video. And if you have any question, you can basically ask me in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you.